What's up YouTube friends? Now recently I got some new eyeglasses online and I'm not quite sure how I feel about them yet. I do like the black right here on the sides but I'm not so crazy about the shape. What do you guys think? Now one thing about these glasses besides I'm not quite sure if I like them or not is they didn't even come with the case. Now I rarely wear my glasses, I prefer contacts, but they get jostled around in my bathroom drawers all the time. My old pair were quite scratched up. So today I'm going to show you how to make this quilted eyeglass sleeve. You could also use it for sunglasses and it comes in three different sizes. Now this one I made for myself and it's the medium size and it fits my glasses perfectly. But I also have a huge head. I'll show you how fast and easy these are to whip up to keep those glasses safe next. So the things you're going to need to make these eyeglass sleeves are two pieces of fabric that measure seven inches squared. This is going to be my outside fabric and this is be my lining. I like to use a nice pop of color in the lining just to give it a little more character. Now I'll be making the medium size one today. If you'd like to make the smaller one, it's a seven inch square and the larger one is an eight inch square. I'll also be using a piece of fusible fleece. This happens to measure seven inches for my medium size but you just want it a half inch smaller than your square. I'll also be using a seven inch square of this craft fuse. I got this at Walmart. I think it was like six bucks. It's from Pellon and it's 808. I like the stiffness of the craft fuse. If you have a lighter weight, you can certainly use that or just leave it out. You're also gonna need something to mark on your fabric. I'll be using this friction pin. You could just use a pencil. I'll also be using pins, clips, and scissors. You'll need your iron with ironing board and sewing machine with matching thread. Today, I'll just be using black. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is fuse your pieces together. So this is gonna be my front fabric. So I'm gonna lay that so that the right side is facing down. Then I'm gonna take my fusible fleece and I'm gonna center it in the middle. It should be a quarter inch on each side. Now I'm just gonna take my dirty pressing cloth here and I'm going to iron this down to the manufacturer's instructions. Now just to make sure it's good and stuck, I'm going to flip it over and iron from the front. I also do have my steam on. So now I'm just going to set this off to the side. I'm going to grab my lining fabric and I'm going to lay that face down. I'm going to center my craft fuse on top of that. That looks good. Cover with my pressing cloth and iron. And just like before, I'm going to hit it from the front also. All right, so I have both pieces fused. Now I'm gonna take my outer fabric that has the fleece on it, and we're gonna quilt this. Now you can quilt this any way you want, but I'm just gonna draw a line from corner to corner with my friction pin. And then I'm just gonna go an inch and a half over and draw another line. You could do an inch, you could do two inches, you can do whatever you want. Now I'm just gonna flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. And you could stop here, but I kinda like the checkered board effect. So I'm gonna turn it and go the opposite direction. Right guys, so it should look like this. And I use this inch and a half spacing on all three sizes of these glasses sleeve. But like I said, you could go smaller, you could go larger, you could crazy quilt this, you could just do lines, or you don't even have to quilt it at all. 
So now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew directly on these lines. Meet you over at the sewing machine. Alright guys, so I'm over here at my sewing machine. I'll be using a straight stitch and my length is a 3. Now I have my walking foot on here. It does help at the end especially, but it's not necessary. And at this time, you don't have to back stitch. So I have the blue line right in the center of my presser foot and I'm going to sew. One side, I'm just going to flip it and do the other lines. Alright guys, so it should look like this when all your quilting's done. And the great thing about these friction pins, if I just hit it with a hot iron, they disappear. Now I'm just going to take my lining fabric and I'm going to lay that face down. And then I'm going to take my outside fabric and I'm going to lay that face up. And you want to make sure that your print is going the right way. This will be the top and this will be the bottom. If you have a print like this where it really doesn't matter, you'll be fine. But like on this one, I fussy cut the deer because I wanted it on the front. So you just want to make sure that it's going the right direction. So now I'm just going to take my elastic spool. I'm going to line up the top and the side and cut off that corner. Just like that. Now because I'm right handed, I went ahead and curved the right side. But if you have any of those southpaws in your family, like my twin brother, you want to go ahead and do it to the left side. So now I'm just going to take my outside fabric and I'm going to lay it so that the right side is facing up. I'm going to take my lining fabric and lay it so it's facing down just like that. And up here at the top, I'm going to come over an inch and stick a pin. Maybe. And then I'm just going to come an inch and a half over from that and stick another pin. Now this is going to be our opening for turning, so you're going to want to leave this open. And now I'm just going to take this back over to my sewing machine and using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to start right here at this pin, back stitch, and I'm going to sew all the way around. Back stitching here at the end. Alright, so I'm starting at my first pin and I'm going to back stitch. My length is still a three. And then just keep sewing. Alright, so I'm coming up to my corner. I'm going to stop a quarter inch away with my needle down. I'm going to raise my presser foot and spin and sew. So I'm coming up to my second pin, so don't forget to backstitch. Alright guys, so now that I sewed all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving this open, with my fabric scissors, I'm going to clip the corners. And this step is optional, but now I'm going to take my pinking shears and I'm going to pink around the sides. If you don't have pinking shears, you definitely want to go around this corner part and make little notches. That way it just lays a lot flatter. not going to clip my extra fabric at my opening. The next step we're going to do is turn this right side out. So at your opening, you want to go down to this opposite corner. 
I'm going to push that corner through. I'm going to hold right here and just pull. Now using a chopstick or anything like that, I'm going to make sure that my seams are nice and smooth and that my corners are poked out. And now with my bone folder, I'm just going to make sure these corners are nice and sharp. And if you don't have a bone folder, you can always just take a pin stick it in that corner and kind of gently pull it out. That works well also. Now where our opening is, I'm just going to tuck it in, make sure everything looks nice and smooth, and give it a good press. Alright guys, so it's nice and pressed. So now I'm just going to stick a pin at the opening just to make sure everything stays lined up. And now from the top, I'm going to come down two inches and make a mark. Probably can't see that that well on the camera. And now I'm going to come down two inches on this side and also make a mark. Now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and with an eighth inch seam allowance, I'm going to top stitch starting at this mark, back stitching. I'm going to go up, around, until I get to my other mark and back stitch. Meet you over at the sewing machine. So I have my needle right on my pin mark. I'm an eighth of an inch away from the side. I'm going to back stitch. And just keep sewing. Don't forget to backstitch at your second pin mark. Alright guys, so I don't know how well you can see this, but there's my top stitching. Now I'm just going to fold this in half. You want to line it up as best as you can, and I'm just going to throw some wonder clips in there just to hold it in place. You could also just use pins, but this is kind of thick. And now I'm going to take this back over to my sewing machine. And right where we stopped is where we're going to start. So I'm going to back stitch right there. And with that eighth inch top stitch, I'm going to sew all the way down, turn, sew, and back stitch at the end. And I like to go over here and here two or three times. All right, guys, so I'm starting right where we ended on our other stitch. And I'm going to back stitch. And I do like to go over that a few times and then continue to sew. Now your glasses sleeve is all complete and as you can see my glasses fit just fine. Alright guys and like I mentioned earlier I decided to do these in three different sizes. So this smaller size used a seven inch square in the beginning and I always love to use a bright fun color for the inside. I think this Batman one turned out great. Now the medium size started out with a seven and a half inch square. That's what I made today. 
I also made this one with this fun paper clip alligator clip fabric and I think that would be great for any teacher, librarian, or just an office worker. And these bigger ones started out with an 8 inch square. Now this one I made for my aunt. She has some of those Sally Jesse Raphael glasses, if you know what I'm talking about, and they're pretty large. So this will fit those just fine. And I also made a large one in camel that I lined with a bandana, and this is great for my glasses in the truck. And here's the one I mentioned in the beginning where I fussy cut out the deer. And I also mentioned if you have a left-hander, you want to make that curve on the left side. So I think these will make a great gift for anybody, especially guys. Sometimes it's very hard to find something to make that a guy might appreciate. But who doesn't have sunglasses? These are also so fast and easy you could crank out a bunch of them for your favorite teachers. I hope you give this glasses sleeves a try. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Head on over to Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon at Scrappy's Patch if you'd like to friend me there. Feel free to share this video across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.